Hi guys, so we have a new project. Uh, we are going to be painting the miniature from the company Dungeon in a Box. Uh, this is a, an exclusive premium sculpted mini. Um, she's made out of resin. This is a gilded red dragon. Uh, Dungeon in a Box is a fun subscription. You get two minis a month, a large mini and then a small mini. She came with a, a Dwarven Artificer, I believe. But we're going to go ahead and work on her. Uh, as usual, we're using the Army Painter Dungeons & Dragons official paint line. Uh, both uh, stuff from Adventures Painter Set and the Monsters Painter Set. We have our wet palette. We have a variety of brushes. We've got water, sponge, paper towels. All the stuff that is needed. And as usual, I like to use this tracing table and a lamp for extra light. Okay, we are going to be using these specific um, paints this time. Um, Dragonfire Red, Cambian Crimson, Cobalt Red. I like to have a variety of reds. Um, since she is a Gilded Dragon, I'm including Kirin Gold. Uh, the Mithril Silver is actually going to be added to um, the paints for the gems in order to give them a little bit of sparkle. The gems are going to be frost blue and tramp green. Uh, I might even add angelic yellow in there. I'm not sure yet. Um, but I think the frost blue and the green will both stick out better against the curing gold. Um, we're going to also use dungeon stone, lawful white, abyssal black, and shadow wash. But before we get into any of that, because she is a resin dungeon in the box. She is not paint ready. So we are going to use a gray primer. Gray primer is one of those um, paints that is included in one of those sets. Uh, what we're going to end up with is here she is. Um, like I said, she's a gilded dragon. She likes her um, jewels and her gold and uh, gold makes really horrible armor by the way. Uh, the fun thing about the um, Dungeon in a Box is that all the characters come with these stat cards. Alright, so we're going to get started with the primer. Alright, um, primer you do not want to dilute. Okay, so the primer has dried, so we're going to go ahead and put a base coat on her. If you look at the picture, um, she has in the webbing, there's a lighter web, a lighter red, and then her scaling has a darker red, while her horns and probably her claws have an even darker red. So we're going to first cover her entirely in Dragonfire Red, which is a lighter red. Then we're going to uh, go back over her body, but not the webbing, with uh, Cambian Crimson. And then we will add uh, Cobalt Red to her um, horns and claws and spikes. As a reminder, every time you use your paints, be sure you put, um, you know, for the first uh, coat, you want to do a one-to-one. -one ratio so uh, for every drop of paint you want to do a drop of water and get that mixed up really well that way that um, the paint doesn't clump and you can see the details a lot better
of the Lenape Tribal Nation. The President-elect and Vice President-elect are committed to a diverse cabinet, and I'm honored and humbled to accept their nomination for Secretary of the Interior. Growing up in my mother's Pueblo household made me fierce. My life has not been easy. I struggled with homelessness. I relied on food stamps and raised my child as a single mom. These struggles give me perspectives, though, so that I can help people to succeed. My grandparents, who were taken away from their families as children and sent to boarding school in an effort to destroy their traditions and identities, maintained our culture. This moment is profound when we consider the fact that a former Secretary of the Interior once proclaimed his goal to, quote, civilize or exterminate us. I'm a living testament to the failure of that horrific ideology. I also stand on the shoulders of my ancestors and all the people who have sacrificed so that I can be here. My dad was a U.S. Marine, and no matter where we were stationed, he made sure we spent time outdoors. Time with my dad in the mountains or on the beach, and time with my grandparents in the cornfield at Laguna taught me to respect the earth and to value our resources. I carry those values with me everywhere. I'm a product of their resilience. As our country faces the impacts of climate change and environmental injustice, the Interior Department has a role to address these challenges. The President-elect's goals, driven by justice and empowering communities who have shouldered the burdens of environmental negligence. And we will ensure that the decisions at Interior will once again be driven by science. We know that climate change can only be solved with participation of every department and of every community. Coming together in a common purpose, this country can and will tackle this challenge. The President-elect and Vice President-elect know that issues under Interior's jurisdiction aren't simply about conservation. They're woven in with justice, good jobs, and closing the racial wealth and health gaps. This historic moment will not go by without the acknowledgement of the many people who have believed in me over the years and had the confidence in me for this position. I'll be fierce for all of us, for our planet and all of our protected land and I'm honored and ready to serve. Thank you again. Mr. President, elect. Madam Vice President-elect, <clears throat> thank you for your confidence. I bring my gratitude and that of the loves of my life, my husband and best friend and partner, Daniel Kern, and my glorious children and their equally magnificent spouses, Connor and Alex, Cece and Damian and Jack. My commitment to clean energy was forged in the fire. I was the governor of Michigan, as the, as the president-elect said, during the Great Recession, when it struck and pushed our auto industry, which is the lifeblood of Michigan, to the brink of utter collapse. Workers were losing their jobs through no fault of their own. Banks wouldn't lend. People were losing their houses. Our unemployment rate in Michigan was 15%. In Detroit, it was 28%. But then, thankfully, as now, help was on the way. Joe Biden and the Obama administration worked with us to rescue the auto industry and the million jobs that are attached to it. They worked with us to retool and electrify Detroit for the future, of course. Okay, so our next step is going to be to add the Kirin goal. The Kirin, by the way, is a um, uh, oriental unicorn. 
really cool creatures. But we're going to use the gold. As you can see, she's got a gold armor plating around her. So we're going to go ahead and do that part. Okay, what I forgot to mention is that you do not want to dilute the metallics. They don't um, apply very well when you do, especially when you're trying to get the detail like we are with uh, our Gilded Dragon. The other thing is I don't feel that there's enough difference in red between her body and her wings. We want and, and, uh, the other webbing. We want that to be a little bit lighter because um, it is a webbing and the light is going to be shining through that. So I think I'm going to try to dry brush some of the cobalt red onto her and see if that makes a difference. Okay, with dry brushing, you get the paint onto the brush and then get a bunch off. Next, we are going to paint against the grain all of the detail work on this is going in this direction. We are going to paint with the dry brush technique in the opposite direction. Alright, so the next thing we're going to work on are the gems that encrust the golden armor. I've added one more color. Originally I was going to go with just frost blue and treant green. I'm also going to add beholder purple. Now with each of these I'm going to add just a little bit of mythical silver to give the gems a little bit of a glowy glittery look to them.
and the next step is going to be to add a base coat of dungeon stone to a base that she's standing on and I will probably add a little bit of a few globs of abyssal black and lawful white blend in to give this stone a little bit more depth. As you can see, I've put two globs of white in her eye sockets. I'm going to take the cobalt red and clean up around her face now. So that looks nice and neat. And I'm going to look around and see if other parts need to be added to um, do more layers and just basically straighten her up and then add some shadow wash. Okay, so there she is. I will give her a final gloss finish over the body with a um, matte finish for the stone. 